Welcome to another Onshape tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to look at making a simple block model of the cylinder Bluetooth speaker. This is probably the quickest and simplest one to draw. Uh, so even if you're not making uh, this one as your chosen design, it's probably a good starting point for learning the Onshape software. So I've already loaded Onshape in my browser and I'm already in my Bluetooth speakers folder. You can see there's the, uh, the demo file that I talked about last tutorial. So I'm gonna create a new file. So I'm gonna click on create and click on document. And I'm gonna call this one cylinder speaker. It would be helpful if I could type. There we go, cylinder speaker, click okay and after a brief pause we'll go into the modeling area now it's always a good idea to think about the orientation of your model uh, what you want it to look like when it's on the page or thinking about if you were doing an assembly uh, how it's going to fit into that assembly so with our uh, Bluetooth speaker that's just a simple cylinder it would make sense for us to be able to see the fact uh, that the ends have got the speakers in so we're going to draw on the front work plane so I'm going to right click on the front work plane I'm going to left click on new sketch and you can see that the sketch box is turned up here and our tools have changed across the top so that we have our different sketching tools now I can either right click and select view normal to sketch plane and it will turn around and we'll see the uh, front plane head on or if I just hold the right mouse button down and move it around I can use a keyboard shortcut I can press the letter N for normal on the keyboard and that will also orientate it round. Now the origin is really important because that's where our three work planes meet and so we're going to use the origin for the starting point of our sketch. Now because we're drawing a cylinder we're simply going to use the center circle point tool. You can see there's different types of circles. We're going to go for the center point circle tool. We're going to hover over to the origin until it goes orange so that we know that we're effectively locating on the origin. I'm going to left click to start the circle to position its center and I'm just going to drag out and then left click. It doesn't matter how far we do that because we're then going to use the dimension tool to say how big that circle is. So this is the dimension tool. It's basically uh, an icon that shows two lead lines with a dimension in the middle and I'm going to select that with the left mouse button then select the outside or circumference of the circle, just drag away a little bit and left click uh, so that I can put a size in. And for the purposes of this, it's gonna be 104. So I can just type in 104 over the top, press enter, and you'll see that the circle adjusted slightly in terms of size, and it's now dimensioned to 104 millimeters. So it's 104 millimeters from one edge of the circle across the other edge going through the center. Now the first part that we're going to create on the speaker model is going to be the outer skin. Um, because we're just creating some simple block models, I'm not going to worry about this being a wrap perhaps around the outside of the two end pieces. So I'm just going to make this six millimeters. Several ways I could do this. I could draw another circle and dimension that circle. Uh, but actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the circle that we've already drawn. So I'm going to use uh, the tool here that creates a profile. It, this to me looks a little bit like Mr. Greedy. It's the offset tool. I'm going to click on the offset tool. I'm then going to click on the circle and you can see it wants to go outside. It's pick the number five if I zoom in a bit you can see it's put a dimension of five millimeters in there and it's going on the outside of the circle that we've already drawn. I want to go on the inside so I'm going to hover over that arrow until it turns orange I'm then going to hold the left mouse button down and drag across doesn't matter how far across I go once I've done that I can press enter or return on the keyboard and then I can type in the number that I want and I'm actually going to make that six millimeters so I type in the number six then hit enter again and you can see now that it's drawn a circle inside the previous circle uh, with a six millimeter distance I'm now going to extrude this. I'm going to stretch this circle out so that it becomes a tube. 
I'm going to do that a distance of 104 millimeters. So if I just you hold the right mouse button down and turn that to a slight angle you can see what's going to happen. So I'm not going to close the sketch I'm going to leave the sketch open and I'm going to left click on the extrude icon here and you can see straight away it's defaulted to a 25 millimeter distance it's given me a bit of a preview and um, show me what it's going to do so I want to change that to 104 millimeters and if I press the tab key on my keyboard it'll update but I don't want it all to go off in one direction we've got an end condition here of blind uh, which is right we're not going up to anything else there's nothing else in the model that I could go up against but I want it to be symmetric so I'm going to click on the symmetric uh, button and that'll put a little tick in there a little checkbox if you like and that means that it's going 52 millimeters to the left of the sketch and 52 millimeters to the right of the sketch that's quite important for our next step once I'm happy with that I'm going to left click on the green tick and we've got our first part of our model done so we've got our solid uh, tube if you like for the outer shell of our cylinder speaker the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw one of the ends on here so in the in the first step we drew a sketch on the front work plane this time we're going to draw a sketch on this end here so I'm going to hover the mouse pointer over until that surface is selected I know it's selected because the inside and the outside of the cylinder edges are highlighted in orange I'm going to right click and I'm going to select new sketch with the left mouse button again I want to view on to the sketch to make it a bit easier so I'm going to press the N key for normal two and it's flipped the model around so I'm looking straight on the edge now I could do this sketch in several different ways I want to pick up the outside uh, diameter of the circle or sorry the outside circumference of the circle uh, I could do that by drawing another circle and dimensioning it the same as before but I could also use this tool here so this tool allows me to click on the outside edge and effectively turn that into part of the sketch so if I click on there hopefully you can see that it's got a slightly bolder darker line on there now I also want to draw a circle inside which is the hole for the speaker so now I'm going to go back to my center point circle and this time I'm just going to click in the center come out a little way and click again and I'm going to dimension that because I want that to be a specific size so I'm going to left click on that come out of the way and I'm going to dimension that 67 millimeters because that's the diameter that we've used in the Bluetooth speakers so if I just move that to the side now by holding down the right mouse button hopefully you can see there's a dark line on the outside we've got the dark line here so we've got two sketches and they're they're known as fully justified uh, they've got everything that they need to have the information for the software to know that they couldn't be anywhere else they're located uh, in line with the origin and they've both got a diameter the diameter for this one is constrained because it's actually the same size as the outer part of the cylinder and the diameter of this circle is constrained because we've told it how big to be okay so let's turn this two-dimensional sketch into uh, part of the three-dimensional model so I'm going to click on the extrude icon again again you can see it's defaulted to 25 I want to change that to 6 I'm clicking on it and changing it to 6 I'm going to hit enter to update it um, so if I hold the right mouse button down and spin that around you can see that we've now kind of got a solid end with a hole in it to our cylinder I'm going to left click on the tick and you can see the model a bit more clearly now what I want to do is to do the same at this end now I could repeat that process uh, but actually there's a quicker and easier way and I'm just going to mirror what I've done this was the reason why we extruded the tube symmetric from the front we uh, can repeat what we've done just with a mirror over the front work plane so this time I'm going to select the mirror tool and I don't want uh, a part mirror I'm not mirroring a part I'm going to mirror a feature so I'm going to left click there and select feature mirror the feature I want to mirror is extrude 2 so over here we've got a list of all the things we've done there's the sketches that we've created uh, there's the first extrusion and uh, there's the second extrusion so extrusion 2 
and we're then going on the dialog box the mirror plane I'm going to left click in the box and I'm going to select the front plane so I left click on the front plane and you can see it's done a quick preview it's added it on there and I'm just going to left click to confirm and if I move that around you can now see that we've got our basic shape of our cylinder Bluetooth speaker if I right click in space I can left click on isometric so that I create it as an isometric uh, view uh, you've been learning about isometric in some of the graphical communication lessons that we've been doing and we could quite simply uh, print this out if we wanted to and you could trace over that to use that as part of your uh, design modeling and you could then render the drawing once you've printed it out let's actually turn it quickly into a drawing so we've been working in a part studio I'm going to left click on insert new element and I'm going to left click on create drawing now I'm going to go to a custom template I'm going to pick ISO for International Standards Organization I'm going to leave it at A4 I'm going to leave it at millimeters um, normally we draw in third angle so I could left click to select that but it won't actually matter for what we're doing because uh, we're going to put a 3d view in there um, I can include the border that's not going to matter I'm not going to put any views in there and I'm going to left click OK so as you look down at the bottom of the screen you can see that we've now got drawing one and it allows us to select part studios or assemblies we've only got one thing in a part studio and it's part one so I'm going to left click on part one and that will allow me to create a drawing so it defaults to an orthographic drawing which again we've been looking at in our lessons I'm going to change the view orientation from front to isometric and you can see that we've now got a preview the scale is one to two or half scale I'm going to left click on that move it up and change it to one to one and I'm just going to place that nicely in the middle of the drawing and that now is an isometric view of the cylinder speaker casing and I'm going to quite simply leave it at that but what I could do is I could now print that drawing off on the printer uh, on an A4 piece of paper and I'd have a scale isometric drawing of that case that I could then trace over or even on that drawing I could uh, start to render it and make it look like materials and if I printed two or three off I could perhaps experiment with different finishes that I might want to apply to my actual design thank you for watching that's the end of the tutorial for the basic cylinder bluetooth speaker case